Welcome to Backstage with Richard Ridge. One of Broadway's most beloved stars, Tony and Grammy Award winner Heather Headley, is headlining some concerts this fall in New York and Boston to coincide with the release of her brand new album called Broadway My Way. And I caught up with the glorious Heather here at the Langham, New York, Fifth Avenue. It is so great to see you. It's so good to see you. So you're about to return to the East Coast with your concert. I am. How excited are you? I'm excited and nervous. You know how that is. It's <laughs> always, it's like, you know, your new little baby. So yeah. I'm excited about it. Nervous a little bit, but we'll be okay. Okay, so it's called Broadway My Way. It is. So what's the show going to consist of? Tell us. Um, lots of uh, songs that I've kind of tried out. Songs that, um, you know, in my concerts over the years, I've always had like a little Broadway section. And so all these songs that have kind of been like, okay, that worked, that worked, that didn't work, don't do that again, that kind of thing. And then songs that I feel like have um, been a testimony to my journey to Broadway here. You know what I mean? So I think there are songs like Home that make me always remember New York, but also remember Trinidad and Indiana, where I, I grew up after that. Um, sounds like My House, you know, Look to the Rainbow, Some Over the Rainbow, which I've done a lot. Um, so they, they all kind of speak. And there, there are songs that I've done in shows that I've been in. And then a few songs that I've, uh, I'm gonna do that from shows that I, I may never be in. Yeah. You know, so it, it, it's, it's kind of fun to hear them all, you know, and try them on, you know? I always say songs are like dresses to me from I somebody else's that. closet. But it's nice. So this tour coincides with your new album. Right. Called Broadway My Way. It is. Gorgeous cover, gorgeous Thank tracks. You. I heard some of them last night. Thank you. What was it like making the album? So, you know, I've done, because I always say that there are all these little branches in my tree. And so I did the gospel album and I, I did the pop album, the R&B album, you know, and I, I just always felt that there was this one album, like the kid in the corner going, it's my turn, my turn, you know what I mean? And so we decided to do this Broadway album for it. Ironically, it started as a, a live thing. So I had done a concert and my husband had said to me, he said, I want to record it. And I said, no. You know, it's like, no, no. And he's like, Heather, if we don't record it and we don't have it, you have nothing to play off. So it started as this live thing, and then we kind of got into studio and it, it, it morphed. So um, the album has just kind of come alongside with that, and, and they're just a group of songs that will be sung. Some of them will be sung at the, the concert as well, that I've just heard differently in, yeah. in my head, you know, to some extent. Um, like when I'm in the shower or in the car humming and you hear something and you're just like, oh, I wonder how that would sound, you know, on me. Sure. You know, like I said before, they're, 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 they're kind of like dresses and sometimes you go, well, if I hem this or I take this out here or I, you know, change the sleeve, I wonder what that looks like on me, you know, and, and so that's, that's where they were, so. The cover's gorgeous. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah thank you. I was, I was backstage and, um, the a sweet lady who's who works on it with me, Amy, had said, I just want, she's like, you know, because we thought about, you know, the shots. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the face shot and, you know, standing in the middle of Times Square with fur or something. I don't know. It's some <laughs> terrible thing. And so she's like, she's like, what about, you know, that feeling you have right before you hit the stage? That's what it is, isn't it? And I said, yeah. And so she's like, don't worry about anything. Like, I was like, what? And she's like, I'm just going to send a photographer. You don't even have to think. And I was like, okay. And so I never knew when it was going to happen. And so they just were clicking away. And that's what happened. It's I was stunning. backstage. Thank yeah. you. I was backstage getting ready to do one of the arenas with, with Andrea. And then after, they were like, here's, here's a picture. And I was like, I like that. All you there have to is do is so make sure that your hips are okay. You have to work out. <laughs> your hips are full <laughs> In this picture. <laughs> but no face, you can be nothing. <laughs> Let's talk about Brooklyn's King's Theater. What a yeah. gorgeous theater. Talk about yeah. that concert. That's your first. That is. Um, so we hit Brooklyn first of November. Okay. Um, and I'm I'm excited about that. Of course, it, you know it's coming to New York, and so we're hoping, praying that all my New York friends will just kind of cross the bridge and, and come down, uh, come to Brooklyn. We're also. Um, trying to give a lot of the proceeds to Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS, which I'm really excited about. So we're gonna have a great time on stage where the aim is to fill the pocketbooks because I, I now that I've gotten a little older um, and I see friends who've not only gone through illnesses, but I'm now dealing with friends who have kind of left the theater experience. And although my experience has been a, an amazing one, some others 
have not. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, and so it's, it's it's really a great gift for me to be able to say Broadway has given so much to me. Let me see if I can give back in this way and if it benefits friends and, and castmates and even people that I may never know, yeah. then it, it's great. So we're excited about Kings. It's a beautiful oh. theater and um, being able to bring this. And then two days later, I'll just head into Boston and, and we'll, do, we'll do another one. But you know, you know how I am. All of them will be different yeah. because they kind of go off of the audience and how we feel. So I've had many times that I've, I'm on stage and I go, we're not going to sing that now. Just put that back and give me that one or just sit by the piano and we'll sing this. And so I think every show is going to be organically different um, and not necessarily the same. So Brad, Brooklyn will have, a com I think, a completely different show from Boston. I think it's great. You're doing it for Broadway Cares Equity yes. United States. What an incredible night that is going to be. It will be great. I, I mean, especially for them, I, I really want it to be a, a, a great night for them, you know, so that we can just celebrate that and celebrate them. And, and they just do so much for the entire community. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and especially, as I said to you before, now that I'm seeing it reaching even kind of to my doorstep with my friends, um, to some extent, it's good. What do you love the most about touring and recording? What gives you the most artistic satisfaction? Um, I think with the touring, it's seeing the people. I, you know, even when I record now, all the lights have to be on. It's kind of like how I used to be when I was a, chi a child. Off, I mean. So I, I take all the lights off, and I'm, I have to see people in my head, because I, I, I've, al I've been, I'm always bad with rehearsals. Like I'm not good with that. I have to see people. So um, the touring makes me happy because I can, I can kind of focus in on the people and, and see smiles and frowns or, you know, who, who I need to kind of get to come along or not, you know, that kind of thing. So I, I, love, I love that part of it, you know, and just seeing people change and be happy or, or sad. You know what I, I, I was thinking about it and, and it happened, it really was, it kind of stamped into me, um, September 11th, so yeah. I had left AIDA September 9th, and that was my last show. Yeah. And then the world changes September 11th, right? And I remember calling and calling and making sure everybody was okay and blah, blah, blah. I remember calling Adam, and Adam Pascal says to me, he says, Heather, it's, it's just a mess. He said, dogs are in the theater, things are crazy. He's like, but they're bringing in all of the, the firemen's wives and families. He's like, it's, it's a huge theater, but we're only performing for maybe 500 people, you know? Yeah. And I said, oh gosh, it, you know, it, I, I can't imagine and blah, blah, blah. He said, but Heather, it's just the greatest thing I've ever had to do. He said, because I, for two hours, I get to take that away. And I remember thinking, I want to come back, yeah. you know what I mean? Because that's the way that I can help. And so since that minute, I've always thought of it not just as like people come to the theater to see us, yeah. but how can we serve them? You know, because people come in with such problems and issues and, you know, people get bad diagnoses from doctors and kids are not doing well and you have to go back out. And for two hours, we get to change that thinking. Sure. You know what I mean? And so that's what I hope, that I, I love seeing the audiences, I love doing the tour because for two hours you come into this presence and I can, I can move that for you. Yeah. And cha hopefully change it for two hours. And then when you go back out there you can think about it again. But in here, we'll have some fun. Sure. Yeah. You know, you're known to legions of fans for your work on stage. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your Broadway debut. You and the original Broadway cast, Nala, of the, one of the most successful musicals of all time. There she goes. The Lion King. I still got it. Is it in your muscle memory? Does it stay? It does. Right? Because you're doing that. Like, yeah, yeah, I just say Julie Tamor and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like, I, I'm like, oh. Yeah, it is. It, I think it's still in my muscle memory yeah. to the, you know, your, your head kind of moves it. The other day we went to see the 20th anniversary yeah. and the girl did something and I'm like, yeah, I did, yeah, that's, that's, what we, that's what you do. You know, they were coming down the aisle and I think one time one of the animals did something to me and I naturally just went, yes, I bowed. And I was just like, what? <laughs> it's just, it's stuck. You it's know what there. I mean? It's in there. She's in there. It's just like Aida, you say it and my hands kind of 
get all you know like I, I get you know the angst but yeah it's just, it's just that muscle memory so favorite memories of those two shows first of a Lion King and then uh -huh. you won the Tony Award and every other conceivable theater oh, gosh. award for believe Naida yeah, what shock. those shows mean to you um uh, Lion King is is a great um, I, I'm just incredibly honored because at the time I didn't understand how big it was gonna be I don't know if anybody did you know yeah. at the time my first First memory, first thing would be there's a place in the New Amsterdam theater where there's a, a little cubby, and so you can see the stage, whoever's standing there, but the audience can't see you. So I'd be in full regalia in my outfit, maybe a robe, and I would, you know, I can come into that corner. It was press night, and so we didn't have many costumes. We we had the cheetah, but everybody was like in black, you know, and we were just gonna sing the show. And at that time, you know, I had just come from ragtime and I was still kind of like, you know, I, I don't know. And, and, and Julie had, had really been kind of harping on us about about the um, look of the show, about, you know, just the technicality in your hands and, and what, and I just, I wasn't getting it. You know, I was like, why why can't I just be this? You know, I just came from ragtime. Why can't I just float? <laughs> and she's like, no, I need, you know, the angles. And I'm like, I don't know. So I'm standing in this little cubby, it's press night, Julie comes in at the same point, and I'm like, oh gosh, Julie's in here. And you know, I, I, yeah, okay, fine, okay, fine. And I remember the lights went down, they hit, we had the sun, the light hit on the sun, CD started singing, you know, Nazigonia, and the giraffe started, the cheetah came, and I, I, I buckled over and just started crying. And I grabbed into Julie's hand, and I, I'm sure she still has nail marks in there somewhere from my fingernails and we had just grabbed hands and I was like oh and I was like I got it yeah. I got it and, and then at that point it had cemented you're in the greatest show on earth that's amazing and then and that was it it was yeah. done and I still have that every time and I would go right to that cubby like every I, I love seeing shows that I'm in because it helps me understand them and so I would go there I think twice a month just to see the opening to just get a little refresh and go in there. So that's my greatest memory from that show. Aida. Aida. <laughs> my greatest memories every night would be, um, you know, we'd sing Not Me and we'd be bawling and crying and, and the tomb would, you know, we'd die and the tomb would close and everything. And I always loved the reveal of the museum yeah. at the end and hearing the audience go, Ooh! <laughs> and I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> Got <you> again. <laughs> Like they, you know, because I remember that feeling. Yeah. So when we first came in, Bob Crowley had sat with Bob Falls and was talking Sherry and I through Sherry Adam and I through the whole show. And I remember he showed us that museum at the beginning, and I was just like, well, "That's a nice idea, but you know, the museum." And they're walking. It's like until so, you know how he's very quiet. They'll be walking around the museum, and and they see each other, and then they walk, and Sherry turns around, and so we get through the whole show, and I'm like, oh great, the museum, where's the museum? Why do you put a museum? And I remember that feeling of at the end, and then so then they die, and they go into the tomb, and they go away, and then the museum opens. So I remember going <laughs> <laughs> and crying, and Sherry and I holding each other, like it was the best show ever. And so every night, I loved hearing the. Uh, you know, that gasp of air that the museum was back. So that was great. And in working with Sherry and Adam and that entire cast yeah. and Wayne Salento and, and all of them, I, I had the best of times. It was the best of times. It was the best of times. Yeah. Yeah. We are I had the privilege of seeing you in The Bodyguard. Yeah! 
in it's the so West Head. Yeah, idea. totally. <laughs> so, favorite memories of that? Oh, goodness. What um, comes to mind? The bodyguard scared me for a long time yeah. because it was Whitney, and she is like yeah. a big teacher for me. So that. Um, I believe between you and I, I think the day before opening night, I was in fetal position in my bed, just incredibly nervous. Kind of like my career is gonna be over tomorrow and I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I gotta get a job. <laughs> so it's like, cause it's done, you know? And um, I remember finishing I Will Always Love You yeah. and hearing the crowd kind of you know, go crazy, and then, um, and, and not just for me, but for the show, and doing the last number, and seeing them like on their feet, and having the feeling of like, you like it, we're okay, I have a, I can come back tomorrow, and, and that feeling that it was, it was gonna be okay, you know, because yeah. even the English, I always tell people this, like even the, the very polite English, like every night, you know, I, was, I did like 14 songs in that show. And so every night, I, you know, it's like a marathon. You're running and you're, you're doing all the songs, blah, blah, blah. But the last song, of course, you, you run a marathon and now you're supposed to thread this needle. And I remember always taking that breath and going, if I, and I felt like the whole audience went. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I felt like they'd never stopped doing that. <laughs> director Thea would always be like, they're not doing that, I promise. I'm, English people don't even know what they do. We don't do that. I was, like, I was like, oh no, I know they're doing it because I'm doing it. I was, I would, if I, and I felt like the whole audience just went, and they wouldn't, like there would be no talking, nothing. And so by the time I ended, yeah. and then they'd, they'd applaud and go, oh, it was okay. So um, I think that first night of kind of being like, it's okay, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you were so okay. amazing in that. Oh, it was So fun. terrific. We got through it, yeah. Suge Avery, you returned here to come yeah. back in The Color Purple. Yeah. And just took it somewhere totally different. Because <laughs> you and I talked during that when you first yeah. came back into New York. Yeah. What was it like stepping into that show, working with that cast, and just taking Broadway by storm all over again? Well, you know, I came into that show at a very precarious time. Yeah. Um, Jennifer had to leave, and she left, I believe it was a week after the Tony nominations, yeah. which is a really tough time for them. You know what I mean? Because you're in Tony mode, and, and the last thing you want is an upset. It's for somebody new to come in, and now you have to change the show, which they did. Because um, John Doyle had kind of been like, clean slate, new choreography, new everything. And so, um, I, I kind of felt for them and for Cynthia because yeah. you know you you're used to I know how that is you're used to your person and so I was I was trying to make this as easy for her as possible you know what I mean during that time um, the cast was crazy you know led by Cynthia because I when I first came to do the show my aim was to tell them when I first came to see the show because they said we'd, we'd like you to come see it my aim was to be like thanks for having me. I, I even said to them, I was like, I'll pay for my own ticket because I'm not going to do it. I don't want to use your money. We'll pay for the, my own ticket. And I brought my husband with me. And at intermission, I looked over and the football player was crying. And so I'm looking at him and he's like, and he goes, we're going to clear your schedule. You're doing the show. And I was like, but daddy, I didn't say we were going to, you know, I was like, what? And he's like, you're doing the show. We're doing the show. And, um, and just fell in love with it. And Shug Avery gave me a, an opportunity to just be somebody completely different. Yeah. Um, and so also to question myself about a lot of things. Like I was like, do I have a Shug Avery in my life? Do I know her? Um, and if I don't, why don't I? And you know, because I think we have these presuppositions about people and, and, and think about people in certain ways and, and not understanding how broken and hurt yeah. they are as well. You know, so she was, um, she was fun to play, and I love doing all these women because they've all taught me so many different things in different ways, you know? So she was, she was a good egg, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because of your success on television, many people who might not have seen something live before will be coming to see you in concert. Right. And it's going to change them. You remember the first time you went to see someone? I remember the first time I saw like a television star in a show, and I was yeah. like, this is live theater, or you see a singer, and it changes yeah. everything. Yeah. What that means to you. 
I, I, you know, it's, it's, um, it's beyond because you kind of see them in a different light if you didn't know that light before, you know what I mean? So um, I think you're always trying to show them all the facets of you. I, I've never loved to be in a box. Like, that's why yeah. I hated people saying, you can only do this. You know what I mean? Whether it be because of your gender or you're, you're black or, or whatever. I have a, a part in some of the shows that I, I sing all the songs I can't sing on Broadway. And they're all men's songs. Or they're all like, you know, back to before or something like that. Because I'm like, I just, I don't ever want to be placed in a box. And I totally understand that there are shows that I should not and cannot do. Because of the story. You know what I mean? Like, it, as much as I'd like to play mother, it, it's better if it's a white woman. <laughs> it helps the story a little better. <laughs> <laughs> but, but um, I think it's just great for people to see a different um, side of you. Uh, to understand your story and to hear, even sometimes to hear us, to s hear you speak and speak about your life and understand if you're funny or not. Yeah. And, and to, I think for some of these people to introduce them to a different thing. Because what I've said to everybody is that this may sound like it's a Broadway album, or not sound, but look. It says Broadway My Way, but I really also want people who have never thought about being on, going to a Broadway show or have ever listened to a Broadway album, to listen to the songs and not hear them, just to hear them yeah. as songs and not be like, oh, that's this from the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just listen to it as music and enjoy it. And, and I think you will. Sure. Mm -hmm. My final question is, everybody adores you. Everybody loves You're working sweet. with you. You have tackled family and career so beautifully. What is the best bit of advice that you've been given, either personally or professionally, mm -hmm. that you live by? Um, <laughs> don't uh, lose your soul to gain the world. You know, I think it's a, it's a verse in, in the Bible, you know, and it, it kind of deals with Christianity, you know, don't, don't uh, lose your soul to gain the world. But I've now seen it to kind of deal with my life, that um, the family is important and people who love us are important. And um, that person you go home to. Yeah is important, you know what I mean? All this fades, you know, at some point, um, we're not maybe gonna talk <laughs> as much, you know what I mean? Because you come to the point that there's a new person or, or, you know, you're not doing this as much or, you know, whatever it is. And um, I never want to get to the point that I, I can't look back and see friends or see family members or people that still love you that say, I have loved you and will love you, whether you're Heather the singer or I just love you because you're head of my mommy, head of my wife, head of my friend, you know? And so um, I've now come to understand that those relationships are incredibly important and those relationships make Heather Headley on stage be a better Heather Headley yeah. on stage. You know what I mean? Because that Heather girl that they all like who, you know, is in her sweats and no makeup and is trying to make cookies, you know, that girl is intact. So I, it's better to do that. So I think, I think that's the, the best piece of advice. Just make, you know, lo have your, your family, your friends and love on them and let them love on you and, and have that community so that you can go out and do everything. That you, it, it really does strengthen so that I can go out and do everything else. It, it makes it slightly easier. This has been great. I thank you so much. We see you thank at you. the King's Theatre on? November the 1st. And then at the uh, Colonial? At the Colonial, November the 3rd. Are you coming? I'm hopefully coming down to the King's. Are oh, yes. Are you going to wear this purple tie? Because I like Should it. Should I? I think I'll yes. wear my purple tie I that like night, it. okay? I like it. Because being from Northwestern, it <laughs> makes me very happy. Yeah. <laughs> I love you.